It is going to be an absolutely beautiful day today. I think it's supposed to get to like 70 degrees. And I'm gonna check on this corn again because I think probably within like a couple days or so we're gonna go ahead and pick this dry corn. We do have one more thing we need to do to our corn crib. And also this evening, we have a, uh, an experiment that we're going to do that Glenn came up with to try to thresh our wheat. If you remember, we had picked that wheat and then we had it drying and we just didn't have the time to get back around to it. So we're gonna get that done this evening and see how that turns out. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of these. I notice a lot of these are now facing downwards like I want them to be. So I'd say the majority of these are finally ready. Wouldn't mind seeing it just a little bit drier, but I think it's pretty good. And at this point, when we get rain and all that and the corn gets wet, it doesn't dry really that quick because you have such short sunlight hours to dry it. So I think we're better off to just go ahead and pull this than to risk this just standing and staying wet. I'm gonna check one more corn from the very lowest section of the garden. Don't you eat? No, ma'am. Drop, Kaja. No. Oh. There goes that corn. I may have made the mistake of allowing Kaja to eat corn on the cob. <laughs> this one is pretty good, but the very top of it has some mold on it, and I've seen a few of these here and there. Hopefully, it's not too much of the corn but this is what I don't want. And that's why I've been saying I don't know if the sweet corn has a longer drying time than say dent field corn does. And that's why I think our next experiment for doing corn for using as chicken feed, we're going to be trying to use the dent corn, the bloody butcher dent corn. Any of these that have mold on them, I'll probably just break that part off because I don't really want to stick any of that in the corn crib. I'm gonna give this to the chickens since Ka just stole the other one. I guess semi-dry corn doubles as dog food. <laughs> Here, chickies! I'm going to make some maple syrup cookies because I still have a whole lot of maple syrup from last year's run that I need to get rid of. As you've seen in a lot of the videos, I'm still cooking a lot of pancakes and pancake muffins <laughs> to try to get through that. If you saw in our previous video where we built this corn crib, well, put this corn crib together out of an IBC tote, um, one of the things that we still had to do is where the IBC tote has like a spout that comes out down here, there's, it leaves a big gap, obviously where a mouse or any kind of critter could come through, but we need to fill that with something. And so I mixed up some cob out of clay and added some hay to it. And we're gonna use this to pack this gap here, this hole. You know what we might need? We might need to put something against this on the outside since this is kind of thin to keep it from like sliding out, you know? Kind of like you would do like concrete. This is gonna be a much bigger crib than the corn we have available yeah. this year, but yeah. for future years, we'll, uh, we'll cut a a discharge chute here and right has like a gate, maybe a wooden gate that lifts here, a discharge. And then the corn can yeah, kind of feed just, out. Yeah, and we just way, set this yeah. up on blocks or something to enough enough height to be able to get like a bucket under it yeah. and discharge or something. Yeah, like you said, this year we definitely don't have enough corn to 
I don't have no idea like how high the corn we have is gonna come up. I'm I'm yeah. done here, but I don't know. It's probably um, not gonna be that significant. Be a lot, yeah. But. yeah. But it, you got to start somewhere with testing concepts and ideas, yeah, and right. this is going to be a good way to test this concept, and I think it will work. So we have around the corners of the corn crib where the wire didn't entirely touch the corners, and it's just enough that maybe a small mouse or something could get through. Obviously, we don't want to take any chances with mice getting in here because that would defeat the whole purpose of the corn crib. So we didn't really come up with anything other than trying to put some cob in these gaps. And hopefully that'll be enough. Mm -hmm. Here, Katja growling at us over there. <laughs> she feels left out. I think another advantage of the cob is that I don't know that mice are going to try to chew through the clay like they would. Like, yeah, they could try to fill up with like a spray foam or something. Yeah. I think they could chew. They're right like, oh, look at this wonderful bedding stuff you gave yeah, me. I'm right. gonna chew that up, take it home, and then see what's on the other side here. <laughs> I think that's it. I mean, there's a gap over here, but I don't think anything can fit through that. Well, I'm going to do some there if you think. No, I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, why not? Because. Yeah, I got it here. I got a bunch of uh, it. I kind of did overkill on it. A little filled mouse can squeeze through a very small yeah. area. That's why we had to go with this. What is this? Quarter inch, I think. Yeah, it is uh, one fourth inch squares. Yeah, quarter. Whatever you what call, call it. it a uh, harbor cloth. Yeah, quarter inch harbor cloth. But yeah, the cob will dry like hard. Oh like yeah, that. it'll dry rock hard. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think mice will chew through it. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't say they couldn't if they really wanted to. I yeah. Think they, I just don't think they will. Seems like it would be. Can't imagine. We're gonna have to let this dry, at least overnight. I kind of mix the cob a little bit too wet. Hopefully it'll be dry enough tomorrow. Yeah, but it's more workable once so. wet. It is, yeah. Um, and um, as soon as this cob is dry, we're going to take this and put it in the garden and start filling it up with our corn. I don't know how well the cob is going to adhere to this metal, you know, but with this, getting it onto this, um, yeah, at least if it takes a shape, cob. I think, and then it should be, it Help. shouldn't move because it's, yeah, it's like bonded into the, the hardware cloth. Hardware cloth yeah. yeah. And hopefully in an hour, all this just doesn't like, <laughs> I <don't think> so. <laughs> dribble out of there. We have to do the whole thing over again. We've been kind of wanting to get a concrete mixer anyway, but Glenn had a really good idea that we could potentially use one to thresh wheat with. And so we got this one and instead of like, he took out like the paddles that it comes with and he cut boards to fit inside of it with the idea that we would be able to use this as like, uh, what do you call it, a ball mill pulverizer. If you watched our video where we were cutting down the wheat and everything, this was all that we actually got because, as I said previously, our, wheat, our wheat wasn't planted dense enough and of course the turkeys got into it and all that. But we wanted to make sure that we got just enough to be able to test out our process of, you know, our ideas for like threshing and all that and see how all that would work. So this is what we got to work with and I know it doesn't look like much, but it's enough to test things to figure out, you know, your systems and processes. Glenn had made this frame for us to be able to dry our amaranth on and it worked out really good this year for drying our wheat on, obviously. If we have a lot more wheat, we probably need another system. <laughs> We're gonna put golf balls in here. They're just They're just used golf course golf balls, I guess. What are they called? Like shag balls or whatever? I don't know. Shag balls. Shag? Yeah. Like shaggy, shaggy balls? <laughs> I don't know if it sound know, right. I don't know as YouTube friends. <laughs> Those are going to be the golf balls. They're going to be, you know, our ball, ball mill. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> So far, 
This seems to be working really good, but now we need to try to separate the chaff from the wheat. So our idea is to use our small leaf blower to see if we can blow that out, but obviously we don't want to blow the weed out, so let's see if this will work. This experiment is definitely working to thresh the wheat, but it's taking longer to do it than we thought it would. And we have like a hundred golf balls in there, or about a hundred, and it would probably work better with heavier balls. I don't know what that would be, but I would be worried that heavier balls would damage the wheat berries and then hurt the storage life of the wheat berries. And the other thing is, is if we put too much wheat in it, the wheat actually kind of pads the balls and keeps it from threshing really well. It takes a lot longer to thresh. So what we have to do is throw a little bit of wheat in there, like a handful or two, let that thresh, and then blow out the chaff and keep doing that over and over. So we'll see how this turns out, how long it actually takes us. getting chilly as the sun is going down and I don't think we're gonna be able to get this done tonight it's taken so much longer than we thought it would to thresh it but one thing that would help I think is if we had a dedicated fan set up to constantly blow in it to keep blowing the chaff out but we don't really have anything that we can just set up quick tonight to do that Well, it got too dark and too chilly on us to finish this tonight. We got most of it done. There's only a little bit left and the system does work. However, <laughs> without a whole lot of tweaking, I don't see that you could do this on like a larger scale, like a year's worth of wheat. I mean, you could, but it would take a really long time. And as much as we want to grow and harvest all our own wheat without much more efficient harvesting and processing techniques, it would just take an extreme amount of time to do it. So I don't know what our future plans are going forward. Obviously we got a lot of other things going on in the background with the new property and all that and figuring all that out and how, you know, all the details of that, which don't really have any updates yet on that. But I don't know that we'll be doing any wheat this winter or spring just because we have a lot of other things going on. So it might just be something that we have to figure out in the future, whether or not more experimenting is warranted or how we want to proceed. I am really excited. <laughs> to see how much wheat we actually get from this because my hope is that I can at least make one loaf of bread. Because you're so full of it tonight.